Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is you are. Uh, my name is Andrew Scott, and I'm joined today by uh, Justin. Th and uh, we've got a tech talk for you. So this is all about visibility, security control with uh, Citrix Analytics with ABM specifically. So uh, today's session. So that's that's the session today. Um, we are going to record the session. So uh, if you want to uh, step out because of uh, Amazon's doing the delivery, other other vendors are available to deliver stuff at home. Um, then you can do that and catch up the, on the recording. Uh, if you've got a question, uh, Justin will be covering off uh, some questions uh, in the questions panel. Uh, and if you're having trouble uh, listening, there are some controls on the GoToWebinar tool that allows you to, uh, to dial in uh, with a local number if you need to. So, um, Justin, did you want to do a, a quick intro as well? Or maybe not. I love that. You know when you're sitting there chatting and you forget to press the mute button? I'm sure we've all done that. <laughs> So good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so yeah, my, my name's Justin Thurgood. Um, I effectively, I look after our channel go to market for our application delivery and security products. I have great pleasure with working with Mr. Scott on a regular basis. And it was great to be invited along to this Citrix Tech Talk where we actually get to talk about some application delivery today. So, you know, visibility is all important as we know. Um, Citrix have some amazing tools at their disposal, but I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that need a little bit of demystifying. So we thought we'd use the opportunity today to talk about the value of our application delivery management tools, but also how we're moving forward with Citrix Analytics and what that picture might look like moving forward. So we're gonna hopefully unearth some, some, some things, you know, some questions that you may have had. Um, please, you know, this is an interactive session. Um, we would love to hear from you. Use that questions panel. I'll be keeping a close eye on it. I'll be keeping tight lip for the most part because Andy's got uh, all the amazing material that, that to share with you. But yeah, looking forward to the session today and uh, you know, hopefully an opportunity, as I said, for you to get those questions answered. We had, have actually had some questions come in uh, pre-webinar, which is great. So uh, I will be posing those to Andy. So Andy, I hope you are gonna be on your toes today, sir. Yeah, yeah, keep, keep me on toes, awesome. So um, yeah, as Justin said, we've got, uh, I've got a few slides. Uh, but fundamentally, it's all about um, trying to sort of share an understanding of kind of what what it is we're trying to fix. So in terms of agenda, so what is the problem we're trying to resolve and, and, and kind of what what kind of violations can we can we protect or help protect and kind of where, where does it all fit together? Um, what do you need in terms of addressing that uh, need? What, what do you need from, from Citrix? Uh, and then kind of a summary. So, you know, not not too onerous, hopefully. I think we've got an hour in order to go through this. So hopefully you can stay with us for the full time. But um, so in terms of um, the problem, you know, what's the what's the kind of problem statement? I think fundamentally, you know, web security is a big area. There's a lot of things you can talk about from a web security perspective. But I think um, one of the things about the internet is it's uh, it's a fantastic resource. I mean, one of the things that uh, uh, JT and I find is that you know people are so much better informed about things. But yeah, as well as the upside, there's some sort of downside. So you know, one of the things that um, is quite common is for people to use the use the internet's great amount of information to to sort of harvest stuff about particular people. So gather gather some profile information for users and then basically sell that in bulk on the on the internet to other people. So, you know, there's, there's, there's really, really important things that you can do to kind of help mitigate some of that. And then if you run a business, it's very common to have, you know, some sort of web presence. And it, depending on where your business is, that might be a significant part of your business. I know, for instance, um, Citrix does some business with uh, some gambling sites. And uh, we provide infrastructure to, to run some of those sites. And you know, fundamentally, some of them are purely online now because they they see see the revenue from from betting. The traditional betting shop is a is a kind of thing of the past. You know, they some of them have moved out of the on-premise stuff and just moved solely online because they get they get the money. So obviously, to have the application available, have their website available, is a key revenue stream for their business. 
The other thing is, is obviously from the point of view of competition, everyone's in this competitive landscape. So, you know, if there's information that your business has got about particular customers, that's going to be valuable to other 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 vendors in the same space that you are. So, you know, it's important that you can keep that privacy and people don't get that information. In the first three things I've talked about, there's been a cost element. So there's cost comes into almost everything. So it's an important part of it. I thought I'd call it out separately because, you know, if you have a, a your website goes down or your app's not available, you lose competitive information that could have a direct impact on, on your business. And then the other thing is that's quite important really is this kind of human factor. So, you know, there's, there's only so many people that can look to run various things. So if there's some way that we can provide you with a bit more infrastructure or a bit more help to manage your infrastructure in a smart way, then that's going to be a good thing. So uh, the things I've just talked about, you know, a lot of that comes back to the application itself. So um, the zero trust network access is a, is a big, big thing at the moment. You know, fundamentally, according to this slide, a lot of the vulnerabilities are actually in applications, not necessarily networks. And because applications are so diverse these days and people are all in over the place in different locations, it's not that, that traditional approach. It makes things a bit more complicated to manage. So you kind of need some infrastructure that's going to help address that. I talked a little bit about some cyber attacks and they're just getting more sophisticated because they're using some of the same sort of tools. So I just want to try and set some context for that. And then I suppose ultimately you've got to think about, you know, this is a Citrix webinar. So where does, where does Citrix sit in these spaces? Now we've been in this sort of app security, enterprise access, app delivery space for a long time. You know, we've been doing it for a long time. And, and really, I think we're, we've got some pretty good uh, technology that fits in these, uh, these areas. In terms of products though, where, where, does, where does that sit? You know, and I, I suppose what I was trying to say with this slide, you know, why we've got all these different areas. So we've got enterprise access with the kind of gateway product, been doing that for a while. We've got some application security, again, with the sort of web app firewall and the bot protection, that's also in there. And then I, I think the other thing I wanted to sort of really call out is this, the whole thing's underpinned by ADM service, our, our sort of analytics, one of our analytics platforms. But our analytics platform is only as good as the, its, its colleague. So its colleague in this case is the application delivery controller, the ADC. And they work together as a, as a combination. And I think that was shown up. We, we did a proof of concept. One of my colleagues went into a financial institution in London, ran a proof of concept. And um, one of the things that we do is we tend to put in the ADC to do the sort of core load balancing for the financial uh, use case that we had. But you also put in a copy of ADM. So he ran ADM and he, he configured it in such a way that the customer could easily amend that application when they needed to. They didn't have to kind of get into the weeds on the ADC. They had this nice management console which deployed the settings that he needed to run his app. And if he needed to change something, he just amended it in the management platform and it amended it on a couple of different ADCs at the same time. So it kind of gives him a, an easy way to, to manage that. And I suppose what I was trying to say is that our ADM service that I'm going to talk about today it's it's a double act, you know. It works with our ADC. It provides you a way of unlocking some of the value that the ADC has been doing for a long time. So I, I kind of wanted to get that in there. So ADM service. You might have heard of ADM, or, or maybe you haven't. So basically, ADM service is a SaaS-based service offering. So we we have two versions of our management platform, and fundamentally, you can have an on-premise one. And the reason I'm talking about ADM service today is fundamentally because a lot of the machine learning and the AI stuff that's part of what we're going to sort of showcase today is, is only available in the cloud service. And the reason for that is fundamentally it taps into some specific AI machine learning things available on the cloud platform we run it on. So we're not, that's not going to come to the on-prem version. It's, it's the only way to get it. 
And as the slide says, you know, fundamentally having a cloud service console means that you can um, you can get into it anywhere and it allows you to work with different environments. So you can drop agents into, I think the slide here is talking about AWS, GCP and Azure. So you can drop an agent into any of those. You can also drop it in on-prem and hook it into a common service console and get all the good stuff that I'm gonna go on to in this presentation. Now this is a really busy slide, but it's got three, it's got four colors in it. And I just wanted to sort of highlight the orange stuff in the middle um, and the app analytics. So those are the intelligent analytics and the machine learning stuff. That's the sort of key part of what we're gonna talk about today. But the reason to have the busy slide, and hopefully not spending your time reading all of the rest of it, I probably just didn't point it out, I probably should have made this a transitional one. But I just wanna showcase all the other things that, the, that this ADM thing does. So it does lots of different things in terms of the controller thing. That's all about sort of management of the ADCs. It, under orchestration, obviously you can automate things. So auto scaling is one of the options in there under public cloud. And, and there's also, you can automate your ADC estate by using ADM services, kind of like an API proxy. So you, you, you basically use it as a, as a gateway into the whole of your um, ADC estate. So I suppose the thing is get into some of the detail. You know, what, what are the violations that we're looking to protect you from? So I've got a list and the idea is to sort of show you some of these and then talk in a bit more detail about some of the, the main features. Now, as you can see in the tiles, these violations or these issues, they kind of break out into different types of violation. So we have uh, bot protection. So bot protection is, it's not, it's not that, it's not been around that long. It's probably three, probably the last three years or so that we've been doing bot protection. And bots is protecting you from these robots that basically scan the internet searching for stuff. And bots break into sort of two areas. You can have um, basically good bots that gather good information. And then um, there's, there's bad ones that do other things. Now, if you're, if you're running a website, for instance, what's an example of a, a bad bot? You know, fundamentally, if you're, you're doing a booking system for, I don't know, airline seats, for instance, or tickets for some event, then you don't really want, you want to sell those to real people. You don't want a robot to hold them as taken. You want people to be able to buy them. It's the same for airline seats. You want to be able to sell them to a real person. So if you can't, do that, that's going to affect your bottom line. That's going to be uh, a cost that you're going to get that you, um, you won't be able to realize the full potential of selling all the seats on your airplane. And then things like uh, web, our web app firewall, now we can do all sorts of other protections, but these are the kind of behavioral based ones. So, you know, web app firewall can protect you from some of the other nasty stuff that's going online where you, uh, maybe you have a bad person that sets a trap on a website, so when you sign into it, it starts to harvest your information. But some of the violations that are behavioral based in this case is all about upload and download and the use of excessive unique IPs. So if you're coming in from lots of different places, then that might signify maybe some sort of attack. So those are the kind of ones that I'm gonna talk about at the moment. So I'm gonna break out a few of these and go into a bit more detail. But before I move on, I was just wondering, is, is there any, any questions, Justin, before we uh, step onto the next slide? I don't want it too slide heavy. Not yet, but just on the kind of the bot side of things, I think, I think retail definitely has been hit incredibly hard by bot, um, bot violation. Um, I think we've seen a lot of cases of this. I think if any of those on the webinar were trying to get their hands on a PS5 for Christmas, as an example, or maybe the latest and greatest graphics card, you know, if you're a bit of a gamer, um, you have seen bots, you know, swallowing up inventory. I think Nvidia and ATI both cited extreme issues with with weird and weird and wonderful buying patterns. You know, pre preloaded cards and transactions that would front run. The regular you know retail investor like you and i um i think certainly on the video card side of things you have a sneaky suspicion that's got something to do with cryptocurrency mining 
Um, but yes, I mean, sort of like latest collections, you know, new new drops by the likes of Louis Vuitton and Supreme. You know, if there is a, a much anticipated new trainer coming out, um, lo and behold, you go and try and buy. Um, it's incredibly difficult. So we've seen it very, very prevalent in the ticketing market, but certainly retail has been quite badly hit by this and it's a real problem. So how do you circumnavigate that? And this is where, you know, the ADC technology, you know, with the application security side of things comes into play. So I think that's a really kind of clear use case that I think potentially all of us have been impacted by. Fortunately, I was quite lucky on the PS5 front. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think there was uh, the PS5 thing is quite interesting actually because um, people were using a bot to, to get buy a load and then they'd stick them up on eBay and sell them for a premium because the, the market was, um, you couldn't get them. So they could uh, make it make a load of money. So uh, very simple business model ultimately. So I suppose um, an example, so this is, uh, I'm going to talk about, there's lots of text on the slide. I suppose ultimately, I just want to understand what the problem is, uh, state what it is, and um, this idea about what you can do to, to beat it. So, you know, this is a thing where you can use content scraping to scour your customers' websites, and um, you can do, do things to identify and mess with your SEO ranking. So it's, it's kind of like extract information and copy it copy data from websites without the content of the business owner. So it's, it's kind of like a real issue. And it's, it's back to something like the ticketing commerce travel example that I've kind of um, mentioned earlier. And it's all about having public facing sites that are directly accessible. And we've got an example here. So this was um, hackers selling scraped LinkedIn data. So in this case, there was this massive data harvest of LinkedIn profiles. So they, they kind of scraped the whole of LinkedIn and gathered 500 million user profiles and then basically sold that information um, online to, uh, to hackers. And the idea is that you can combine some of the profile information with other information. It allows you to do uh, a more targeted attack. So it's quite a disturbing thing, really, if you think about it, uh, just allowing people just to scrape your website just to uh, take the information and use it against you. So what, what's the way to protect this? So one of the features that we've got with our ADM service is this option to um, turn on content scraping detection. So it, it, it runs, it needs 1500 sessions to, to run through it. But if you have a busy website, you know, that, that could, you know, it says two weeks, but you could do that probably quite quickly. And then it's training, um, daily to look at that and it's a transactional type of um, data and what it does it gives you it gives you an event in the console so you can see straight away if you've got an issue and then use that to try and um, drop some of that traffic or stop the bot from, from doing it so it kind of gives you a way of uh, protecting protecting from the content scraper uh, bots that are plaguing your website for instance what else? So, so what about uh, account takeover? So this is uh, another one where you're gonna take unauthorized ownership of online accounts. So uh, the idea is that a lot of times um, they, they don't, you know, when cyber, cyber guys wanna try and break into your environment, they, uh, they're not so keen on, on actually um, trying to break in with a brute force. They're trying to sort of buy some credentials, and maybe use those, in a sort of clever way to try and get into certain accounts. And this account takeover thing is, is one of those things. So you can use password spraying and credential stuff in such a great term to try and sort of breach the accounts. Now, ultimately, um, I think there was, um, there was something online about um, there's, there's a bounty. So the idea is that you could, um, you could sell your, your own user account credentials to someone online uh, to use against your company. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure why you want to do that, but obviously if you're desperate for a bit of cash, maybe, maybe it's the only way you've got. And um, in, in, in terms of credentials, I mean, who's, who's kind of had this as a problem? I mean, I think um, 
Zoom was one of them. It had uh, 500,000 uh, 500, accounts stole, with stolen credentials from Zoom. And then the other one, I think I've got an example here, was North Face. And um, they took account of, again, this is taking account of people where they, you kind of reuse passwords for multiple accounts. And um, it's all completely automated. They've got their own bots doing this. And it's just all about trying to steal data from various popular companies. Now, North Face was, was one of these um, that, uh, that had it. So again, um, how, do we, um, how do we do that? How do we protect against that? And the idea is to use some, uh, some, some, some uh, anomaly detection to try and work out when login failure protect percentage starts to spike. And again, there's a training time. So we need um, a couple of weeks to get this thing up and running. And then once it's up and running, it can detect stuff within 15 minutes or so. So it's a really, it's a really slick little option and it gives you some nice graphics to show what's going on with account takeover. So what else? So um, account takeover was, I was talking about a web, a web account sort of signing in, but obviously we can also have account takeover on Citrix Gateway. So the gateway is really popular to provide a mechanism to gain access to Citrix software environments. And it does the same kind of thing. So it's a two week learning period um, and it learns every day. Uh, anomaly detection is every hour, again, transactional. And you get, these, uh, you get this nice graph to show what's going on and you can see straight away when uh, you get failed login events and, and the clients that are trying to do that. Um, and then another bot one based one, this is uh, upload download volume. So when there's large volumes of data being uploaded or downloaded, you know, something that's a bit different to what is normal, then um, again, this, this has got a slightly longer bootstrap time. So this takes three weeks, but then once it's up there, it's, uh, it's kind of got daily learning and uh, it can pick up the anomaly uh, every hour. Uh, and again, it's based on, on metrics. So we've got some, nice graphics in the console to kind of show you what's going on uh, in terms of um, what is happening with this uh, large volumes and again this is this is behavioral based rather than anything else so it's very very specific and then there's also there's also a WAF version of this so you can look at so we talked about um, um, bot based protection but there's also web app firewall based protection as well and again, the same sort of time, it takes, takes a few weeks to get up and running, but when it's up there, it's, um, it's, it's learning daily and it can detect them pretty quickly in, in a lot of ways. And you get some nice, again, nice graphics on, on kind of what's going on. Uh, when you've got, you can set limits on the amount of data that would be uploaded and downloaded. So I suppose I just want to give some examples of kind of what the, protections are so what kind of things um, you can do with it and then I wanted to just briefly talk about you know where does where does this fit in in terms of what do you need to configure this so as I said at the very start our ADC and the ADM they kind of work together as a double act and basically you need to turn on um, some of the features on the premium license of the ADC and you need sort of a, a, a virtual IP um, analytics tool in the ADM console. And um, then you also need to use metrics collector based on, on kind of what you're doing. And then there's also some advanced security analytics and then there's like a trading time that kind of goes with it. And this kind of, obviously the table, you can see for yourself, the different sort of vulnerabilities have different stages of how they fit together uh, and what you need for it. But it's all a case of just going into the console, turning stuff on, and then giving it a couple of weeks or, or three weeks for those uh, those top four to, to do some do some learning. And then the same kind of thing with uh, web app firewall. You know the volumes are there, so you need you need the premium license, you need the VIP uh, license on ADM, and then you just turn on some of the other the same kind of options. So these are all security analytics based and web transactions based, and these are all three weeks to do the learning. So I've got a few slides uh, on how to turn it all on, but I thought, is there, have you got any questions? Is there any questions coming to the console? There has, um, there's quite a few coming in. Um, 
uh, some of them I think we'll, we'll, we'll tackle at the end, but quite, a, quite an important one was uh, a question that's come in. Do these tools impact the traffic or is it monitoring only? No, so um, this is monitoring uh, the system. So I suppose it, it would impact the traffic if you have um, web app firewall protections. So things like bot protection is a very lightweight load on the ADC. Um, when you turn on web app firewall, there's kind of different levels of protection you can do with a web app firewall. And so depending on how much of that you turn on, there would be an impact on the appliance. Um, obviously, ADM sits separately. So um, that tends to be, if we talk about running it as a service, obviously that sits on our infrastructure separate from the uh, the ADC itself that's doing all the analytics. Um, so there's, there's a mix of things depending on which, which way that swings in, in a lot of ways. But if you had advanced protection on your web app firewall, there would be a quite a lot, there's a bigger load on the um, ADC itself. And we have some stats that can go into a bit more detail about that. Um, hopefully mm -hmm. that. Uh, I, think the question more, I think the question was more not necessarily the impact on the appliance, more on the impact on the traffic, introducing latency. So no, so we we, we don't we don't tend to impact the, the traffic at all actually. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think it stands to reason that you know if you if you're if you're introducing a web app firewall, clearly there needs to be some horsepower involved in terms of you know the the the, the actions that need to be taken and the analytics that obviously we're receiving. So um, but no, uh, that, that was quite a relevant question to ask at this point. I have got some others, but... Um, <clears throat> well, I, I've, got, I've got some bits about how you turn it on. I mean, ultimately, these are, these are pretty straightforward, actually. It's, it's basically just going into the web console and turning on some of the advanced... This, is, this one's obviously talking about advanced security analytics. It's just check the box. Um, and you've got some options in here, things like client-side measurements. So if you want it's a measure and track some of the client side experience, then you kind of need that enabled. And, and obviously you can be quite granular. You can say, oh, actually, I, I don't want bot insight for this particular, it can be per bit um, in terms of what you enable. So there's some options there. Uh, and obviously, as the slide says, uh, you need a premium license ADC to kind of get some of these uh, analytics functions. But I think one of, the other, one of the other drivers for us to have this conversation is that, now, I think we're, it's quite common for customers to buy some of the premium based appliances, um, but then not use any of these security features. And I, I suppose I just wanted to sort of highlight today, you've got some of these great protections. It's just a case of turning them on and enabling them to get um, another level of protection on some of the traffic that you're serving out. And I think one of the other comments that uh, one of my colleagues, Nick Karuga, was saying with a, with a customer, uh, some of the settings up setting up bot protection was actually very easy. You know, I think um, when you talk about web app firewalls, that can be quite intimidating because uh, you tend to want to go in and turn everything on, which is not the way to set it up. You, you start slowly turning things on, whereas bot protection is, is quite a light touch. It's quite easy to set up. Uh, and we can, do, we can do a session on that as a separate follow-up if, uh, if people are interested. Advanced security analytics, and there's a profile, and you can see in the profile you've got the options to choose what kind of violations you want to be notified for. Um, I think I thought it was a bit odd actually why why they would break out to have because wouldn't you just want all of those turned on? Uh, it, it would seem to be the, the the way to do it. And then there's, there's sensitivity settings so that you can set you now how sensitive or otherwise it is. To a particular application, because I guess it might be slightly different based on on the apps that you're you're presenting, uh, and then account takeover and kind of what um, the URL needs to be, what the response code. Uh, again, just setting up and configure the the profile. Um, content scraping. Again, this is a WAF based one, so setting up that. Uh, again, it's just a case of checking the uh, the boxes in the com configuration tool. And then I kind of wanted to sort of summarize some of the key use cases. So, you know, I talked a bit about content scraping in the example earlier. And as Justin and I both said, it's sort of ticketing and e-commerce marketplaces. It's really common for that. Um, and how does it affect their business? And, you know, any, anyone with a public facing website, it's, you don't typically want um, 
your content behind. Uh, typically, it's not always applicable if you have content behind a login page, so it might not be so difficult in that respect. Um, and then customer facing is sort of about um, account takeover. If you've got requiring username, passwords, um, and it's all about you getting the options for data loss. Um, so that's uh, that's the North Face example I gave earlier. Um, layer seven distributed denial of service. We've got a couple of different things with DDoS protection. We do a, a kind of cloud offering that sits separately from all of this. So if you wanted to do some DDoS protection in a, in a kind of slightly different way, um, you can use that for. It was going to be one of us. <laughs> I turned everything else off. I turned yeah, everything else off. I don't mean with the Amazon driver, so. <laughs> it probably, it could be, yeah. Um, and then that, so I was just talking about DDoS, um, layer seven DDoS protection. So we've got that in the ADC, uh, and it's all about website status and loss of revenue. Um, but in some respects, it's a last line of defense when you've got it on the ADC. Probably what you want to do is have it have that running as a cloud service. And there's a couple of off offerings that we've got that kind of sit outside of what I'm talking about today, um, where you don't have to have it constantly, you can just bring it in when you need it. So that's kind of another way of looking at it. And then um, application programming interfaces, that's a really important thing. Um, there's a plethora of APIs being used um, all over the place these days. And um, they're another entry point. And um, I think Experian was a, was a use case where we had API uh, protection issues. So I suppose what I was trying to say today, the purpose of the, the, the sort of tech talk today was to say, look, we've got this, we've got this double act, this ADC combined with ADM service. And when you use ADM service, you get the benefits of these um, um, and machine learning and AI, AL, not quite sure what AL is. Um, you get these options to, to take a look at what's going on with your website and how you go about um, addressing some of those. And I've talked about some of the sample use cases, but you know, fundamentally, I think a really good entry point to this is to sort of start looking at some of the bot protection. And we could, I'm, I'm sure we've got some webinars that I could share where we talked about bot before. And then the next stage is, is obviously start looking at web app firewall and maybe turning on some of that. I mean, we've got, I think it's quite common for us to have gateway stuff. And um, there is a really good slide deck which talks around how to set that up for a gateway. So if, if that was something that's of interest, we could do a specific session on you know, protecting the gateway, an on-prem gateway with some of these security tools. Because uh, as I said earlier, I think it's quite common for customers to have some of the premium features, but then just not have them turned on. And uh, it'd be nice to have uh, another layer of protection rather than, um, rather than just uh, leave it to chance. Well, it's quite ironic you say that, as I have a one such example in the questions panel. So, okay. um, so Ian Jones asks, can you share the details of how and what exactly needs to be set up? We currently have the Premium Plus licenses, which includes the ADCs on premise. Can we utilize all of the ADM features? If so, where are the details? So um, I think that there's gonna be quite a bit in there. Um, so Ian will collect your will collect your details so we can give you fully furnish you offline. However, Andy will give you the, uh, the shorter version here. <laughs> yeah, so the short I think the short version is kind of what I just described. So you know you would start off with some of the bot protection and then um, turn on some of the um, the web app firewall features to protect the landing page on the gateway. And um, we've got a slide deck that kind of walks through that. I mean it. it it protects particular parts of the, the gateway landing page and specific bits of it. Um, but any of those protections, I think, is, is a real step up. And it, I, I'm, I'm just as guilty. I think when I, I worked for a partner uh, a while ago, and you tend to go in, you put in the Citrix software environment, do the virtualization stuff, you put the ADC in so you'd get entry into it. But then you wouldn't, you wouldn't turn on a lot of the security features. And I think I think the context for the landscape that we operate in is is a bit different now, and I think you kind of need to look at some of those security features. And I think, uh, as uh, as you've asked, I think it's uh, 
a walkthrough of, of that I think maybe it would be um, maybe something useful for us to do and maybe stick up on YouTube to make it really easy for you to see how you uh, how you do that. 100% and Ian what we need to do is we just need to look into your licensing entitlement use the word premium plus there so I just want to check to see if that's workspace premium plus and you've it maybe got is. in there whether it's ABC premium edition which is somewhat different so um, but yeah, we can we can we can take that conversation offline. But thank you very much for your question. We'll follow up with you directly. Um, probably, probably just, as a, just before we move on, I, I think the other thing I, I, I've talked about ADM service, and I think as an entry into ADM service, um, there's there's a free version of it. Now um, the free version only gives you a couple of bits, but I think if you've got a gateway and you need to gather analytics, um, you get a limited amount of data that you can gather. But as an entry point, that there's a starter there for nothing that you could sign up with that cloud service and just start to get to, to play with it as an addition to what you've already got. So just to add to what I'd said on that other question that Ian had proposed. Thanks, Andy. <clears throat> so another question come through. Actually, two questions come through from uh, the same individual. Um, thank you, Ernesto, for your question. Um, ABM doesn't need more than an ADC box, correct? activation over a simple configuration APM ADM ADM yeah so um, it's um, it just needs you just need an ADC to work with it in order to gather all the stuff we talked about today yeah so follow-up question is this tool analyzing traffic only at ADC level or are you taking into account data inside each VDI that's an interesting one because that was a question that, that, that kind of was a preloaded question that came through uh, around the different analytics platforms. But yeah, is the tool analyze, analyzing traffic at only at an ADC level? Yeah, so only at an ADC you, you make that sound as though only at the ADC level is a bad thing. But I'd say that, um, so one of the things about, so, so no, we don't inspect the HDX stream in the same way. So I think this has come up a few times um, with defense-based uh, customers. Uh, and the idea is that, you know, fundamentally, um, once you've set a Citrix session up, are you inspecting inside the HDX channel? And we don't tend to do that. You know, we, there are other third-party tools that are available to do that, but on the whole, Citrix doesn't. Okay. Um, okay, so changing things up a little bit, obviously, so the ADC itself does, you know, quite an important job. It sits in front of some critical applications for the customers. Um, I mean, we've noted as Citrix, certainly, that, that the, the take up of actual ADM has been a bit on the slow side. Um, what do you think that is, Andy? I think it's, it's really strange, actually, because um, I think we don't, I think there's a few things to it, actually, if I'm honest. Um, we introduced it probably seven or eight years ago. We called it something, it was called NMAS to start with, then it used to be NMAS, and then it became ADM. So we, we keep changing the name of it, which doesn't help. And I think the other thing is, um, when you talk about analytics, there are some major players in the kind of analytics space. So application um, performance management, a APM, as a, as a market segment, I was just looking at this yesterday and there's some really big players in there. And, and the question posed by one of my colleagues was, you know, do we play in the APM space? And we kind of don't because you know, what we do with application delivery management is we offer you know, insight into some specific things that our ADC does. So it, it gets, that's what, kind of why I said at the start, you know, that ADM gathers all of its information, its in, in intelligence, all comes from the, the data it gets from the ADC. So where the ADC sits, it's gonna get all that information. So it's quite a selective thing that we're doing in a lot of ways. Um, so it, it, it provides a, a lot of capability. Now, I think that to answer your question, I, I think there's, there's a couple of things. So first of all, I think it's quite common for, you know, maybe you have a virtualization deployment, and deploy uh, an ADC as a gateway into that or, or to do load balancing and provide services. But I think the other thing that then tends to happen is um, you maybe have some management platforms. So when we talk about ADM, you think, well, actually, I've already got 
I've already got Splunk or I've already got Darktrace. You know, why, why do I need ADM? And I think what we're trying to say is that, you know, ADM gives you some things, some insight into your ADCs that your ADCs know about that you probably won't get from other tools. Um, but it also acts as an entry point to sort of surface some of that information in a way that makes it really easy to find things. So uh, we can send stuff to Splunk, we can work with Splunk and other APM vendors, but then sometimes um, there's things that about the way we present our analytics you don't get anywhere else. So I think um, there's a couple of things to answer the question, you know, why, why is the take up been slow? I think fundamentally, maybe we don't educate our, our users, our customers and our partners as well as we could do with all the benefits that you get with ADM. Um, and I think we just need to find ways to show the value of it uh, so that you get the most out of the ADCs because I've, I've been in meetings with customers and they're not, they're maybe not using all of the features that we've sold them. And um, it's kind of disappointing because you think, well, you could get a lot more out of this if you use these, these tools. So hopefully that, that kind of covers off. Okay, well, let, let, me, re let me reverse this then. So why, why, do, you, why do you think, um, what are the key reasons why customers have actually adopted? And obviously they, you mentioned there's some other platforms but also, I mean, obviously, other ADCs are available. Um, how have we fared against the competition head-to-head -head when we've presented ADM? Yeah, so I think we've done, I think the message that we started, when we brought ADM out, when it came out as a product, I think the options to get insight from some of our, you know, Citrix, analytics on Citrix HDX sessions was always uh, really attractive. And to be fair, so hands up, I think we did have some challenges with that when it first came out because... Uh, it's quite a difficult thing to do. However, when we when we go head to head, I, I gave an example earlier on in the tech, tech talk. We were in a competitive. Um, eight, we were selling ADCs to a to a financial customer in London, and that was primarily to load balance some traffic, so make something highly available. And as I said in the example, you know, we we delivered them an ADC so they could do the load balancing function that they needed make the service highly available but then we presented it in a way for them to manage it with um, something called a style book now um, we have this this kind of construct within adm that allows you to create a configuration that goes with a specific application and the idea is that you can set up an application with this style book thing and um, i can then give you justin access to the to the manage the configuration and i give you a cut down version of the adc console in order to do that now that all sounds kind of like well why should i care you know why why, why does that matter it's, it's really powerful because it means that once you've got the configuration for your application set up and i give you role-based access to manage it then I, I myself as a network admin i don't have to get involved in it you can kind of manage it yourself and you can do other really cool things like you can do like a cloud migration. So let's say we move from our, our London based data center to stick everything up in Azure or AWS or, or GCP. You just change the targets where the ADCs are and it, it migrates the config into a different data center. So it's, it's really nice. And then it does the whole life cycle. So when your app comes to the end of its useful life, we delete the config and that takes all those configuration lines out of the out of the ADCs that are managing it. And so you, you get away from this Hotel California syndrome where you've you've kept in config and you're carrying a load of dead config in, a, in an appliance uh, and you, you remove it when the, when the app gets retired. And so you don't yeah. have to go through and have this kind of cleanup. So there's a there's a whole bunch of reasons why by using it is, um, is, is a powerful addition to, to what we do. And, and I'd say, just to sort of summarize, I think when we, when we deliver a POC and we, we use ADM in conjunction with it, you know, generally we tend to fare quite well against the competition. I know um, one of the other ADC vendors, they need four different products to do what we do within ADM. So that means that you've got a lot more things to manage, you've got different consoles to jump in and out of, 
Yeah, I'd agree that that kind of visibility across on-prem, multi-cloud, you know, having a single tool for that is actually very handy. Uh, visibility of all those environments, kind of health checking, et cetera, et cetera. Certainly, it gives customers a little bit, a little bit more comfort, especially if they've been used to a true on-prem environment. You know, we can see it and touch it. You can see the lights, lights going off. At least we provide a tool that effectively and gives them the same element of visibility and control. And that's pretty important. But with that in mind, you know, we talk about, you know, obviously the prevalence of on-premise environments, obviously in financial services, clearly there are applications that are never going to move. So I guess my my immediate concern is you mentioned earlier that ADM is going to move to becoming a more of a cloud service or that's where the investment is being made. Yes. Um, you see that there's going to be some shortcomings with that potential approach, especially if the customer is predominantly on-prem. Um, well, at the moment, we've still got the on-premise um, version, and I think um, we there had been some thoughts that we wouldn't we wouldn't keep it. We we just switch everything to the cloud. But um, in conversations that my colleagues and myself we we've had with customers, there are some some customers that aren't going to move to the cloud, and I think our product management team have, have kind of listened to that, and they recognise that we need to have another offering. I think. The, the thing that's happening though is that there's a bit of a divergence in terms of where the capabilities are because um, the purpose of today's session was to talk about some of the machine learning and AI stuff and you only get that on the cloud version. So I think something that I thought about when we were talking internally yesterday about this is that it's a bit either or. What, what you have is you can either have, you can be all on premise or you can be all cloud. And I'd sort of said to the main product manager that, that runs the product for, for Citrix, as oh, it'd be quite nice if there was like a transition phase. So you could you could kind of dip your toe in the water and use the cloud service for some of the things that you have, but maybe you have some of your data retention needs to stay within, I don't know, somewhere in Europe, for instance, it needs to stay within France because of the regulatory uh, constraints that your business operates on. But then you want to make use of some of the machine learning and AI stuff that I've also talked about. So they're talking about trying to make it so that there's a more transitional migrationary phase that's somewhere in between the two. So um, at the moment there is a kind of migration wizard, and as I said, it's kind of it's kind of all or nothing. You, you kind of take your config on prem and move it all into the cloud. Now the idea is that there'll be a bit more of a halfway house, um, but that's uh, still under development. So I'm, I'm hoping that will come out. Uh, in the not too distant future. Okay, but uh, and I, you know, I said you know, data sovereignty is quite you know is is quite a big deal. Compliance is quite a big deal. You know, uh, with, it, with the introduction of the cloud service, that doesn't necessarily mean that data is going to be leaving the business, does it? Um, no, no. I think you you're, you've got options within the way you configure it um, to control kind of what's going on with it. Um, I think it's just a case of being sort of careful based on what the constraints you're going to operate under and, and when you can do the configuration. Okay. Um, so obviously, you know, Citrix are no strangers to the word analytics. <laughs> you hear it mentioned an awful lot in, especially in our collateral, especially if we're talking about digital transformation. Uh, we talk about, you know, the work, you know, the, 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 the future workspace, the move to DAS. Um, how does ADM fit into that kind of grand vision of analytics? Because obviously we can see from a market standpoint, you know, networking and security clearly have, 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 have converged. Um, it's a matter of time before, you know, sort of that, those application insights form kind of that complete picture. And I think you know, that's a vision that, com you know, companies like Splunk have, uh, have put forward. But from a Citrix standpoint, how does ADM fit into the grand vision of, of, of Citrix analytics? And, you know, yeah. will they launch parts of play you mentioned obviously the three concentric circles earlier around application security application delivery and enterprise access so what's the what's the utopia for us where are we going with that well i see that um you know so in terms of what we talked about i've, I've talked about today I, i've been talking about a cloud service so uh, it's a tile within citrix cloud and um you you run it from that that cloud console and it, it gathers a lot of information now what we do with ADM service provides a feed into Citrix analytics as a, as a whole. So you can take a lot of the information that you gather from the application delivery controller and feed that into application analytics, the analytics that you get. 
Now, the way I see this progressing, and we've kind of started doing it already, actually, is um, the, the ADC is a discrete appliance, and we're, we're doing, there's a couple of things going on at the moment. So first of all, we've started to break out some of the components of the ADC so you can run them separately, because, for instance, if you buy um, an ADC with the standard license, you don't get any of the web app firewall stuff that I've talked about today, but maybe maybe you've got an investment in standard boxes throughout your infrastructure, but you've decided that you want some of the DDoS stuff and some of the cloud stuff. Um, so we've now made it so that you can buy just those services, so you can be a bit more selective. I think one of the things about an ADC is you tend to buy, you buy a license, you get all these features, and then sometimes, um, as I kind of said earlier, you, you can sometimes end up kind of using a subset of those capabilities. But you know, if you wanted to add features, you basically have to go and buy another license and swap the license out, which you, you can do. But what if you just wanted to add selective access to a few apps, then maybe a cloud service is a better option. And then the other thing that's happening is um, within those three cornerstones, I talked about enterprise access. We have a new offering. We have something called Secure Private Access, which is a, a ZTNA solution for access to anything. And that's more of a pure cloud service. And I think the thing that's happened with that is that we're seeing the option to bring in app, application analytics and behavioral scoring into the policy config. So that's something we've never really been able to do with the ADC. So the ADC is uh, quite a, a traditional architecture in some respects. It's a discrete appliance that runs wherever it is. You put it in the cloud, on-prem, whatever. Whereas Secure Private Access is a, you know, has a connector appliance that lives in your data center, and you set policy from the cloud console. And that takes some of the behavioral stuff that, that we've, we've talked about in Citrix Analytics, and I actually define policy. And I, and I think the thing that makes that really powerful is you can do things a, in a bit more of a granular way. It's not a kind of all or nothing. So when you would sign into an ADC using, let's say, take the gateway and use two-factor authentication, uh, you need your account name and your password and maybe a passcode to get in to the system. If you didn't know any of those, um, you kind of weren't getting in. It was kind of all or nothing. Now, with the, um, with the granular options that you get in secure private access, you can be a bit more, a bit more granular about how you maybe define access to applications. So you can say, I'm going to take in a risk score and take a risk score as a feed for one of the policy settings. So you can say, well, actually, based on the end, out, outcome of an endpoint scan, I might say, well, actually, oh, Justin is, is on his, his daughter's laptop today. Um, in terms of risk score, how, how confident I am as, as, as his daughter's laptop is a good platform for him to get access to this financial information that we've got in our infrastructure. Maybe, maybe it isn't. In that case, the risk score sets a threshold and it define, allows you to be quite granular in how you set access to applications. And that, that becomes a bit of a new thing, I think. It, it gives you much more choice in how you define access to things. Clearly, you've heard my pandemic story far too many times, Andy. <laughs> For those of you on the call, um, my MacBook decided to die um, in the middle of the pandemic, and clearly I needed to work, so I managed to fire up my daughter's laptop. Unfortunately, because we've got all the, uh, the remote access tools at our disposal, I was able to get back online probably within about 15, 20 minutes. But I did actually have to fill in a, a number of different authentication methods to gain access, as as I should do. So, but yes, I was back up and running. I had my emails, I had my access to Salesforce and Workday, all the things that I need on a daily basis. So, uh, and there's no reason why your employee shouldn't either. So, back to you, Andy. No more, by the way, well, I think question wise, uh, I think we've exhausted the list now. So, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for submitting those questions. So, I guess as we, we come up, Andy, I mean, is there, is there any final thoughts before we bring this to a close? Um, I, I suppose ultimately the purpose of the day was, uh, I, I went through a few slides, uh, but I just want to talk about, you know, some of the features you get with ADM service, some of the things maybe you maybe aren't, we haven't been good at in, uh, telling people about. Um, 
and just look and say let, let's have a let's have a follow-up session and maybe do some of the other stuff that that uh, one of the questioners pulled out i thought that was a really good question actually um and it's really just about trying to get the most out of the stuff that we um we have with our customers so that they can um have a secure environment for, for working because that's fundamentally what we want to do we want to have a secure environment that's that's fit for purpose and uh, and happy customers fundamentally yeah, absolutely and if you have an adc already um this there, there is a free tool that, that that you can that you can begin to start utilizing and if you see value in it then there's the opportunity to 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 upgrade that but you know if, if, without even taking a look at it it's a it's a real shame um it's a it's a tool that provides real value uh, great insights on your application environment and uh you know could even put you in a position where you know you could actually improve the way of life for uh for people accessing those applications so it does seem a quite shame that, uh, that, that that a lot of our customers are not utilizing it when they actually have the entitlement for it so brilliant well Andy, uh thank you very much for that today it's been inc incredibly insightful um and i'd like to thank everybody for participating and sticking with us until the end we the attendees have stood steady uh we lost a few people at we lost a few people at half past nine that happens people have meetings but the good news is this is all recorded uh, a copy of the recording i understand will be shared um along with a pdf version of the of the presentation if you've got any questions uh please reach out to us so um Again, uh, details will be shared uh, following the the, uh, the the details that get sent out. But thank you, everybody. Um, it's always been a pleasure to attend these tech talks, and we'll look forward to the opportunity to come on and speak to you all again very soon. Cool. Thank you very much. Have a good day.